door to door, bumper to bumper, wheel to wheel. The first eight rounds of the 2015 TCR International Series have been packed with incidents, excitement and drama. The first eight rounds of the TCR International Series have seen seven different winners. So, will rounds nine and ten see yet more names added to that list? After Sepang, Shanghai, Valencia and Portimao, it's now the turn of the Temple of Speed, Monza in Italy, to host the series. This is my track. Uh, I, I'm born here. A lot of history spirit here. So. Hard racing, a lot of drafting, a lot of overtaking. You must be careful with the brakes here because they are long straight, but they are also very tough uh, uh, braking. It's always very nice for an Italian driver to, to be here. Saturday afternoon in Monza, the two-part qualifying session was run under darkening skies, although the threatened rain held off. Getting into a slipstream is vital at Monza, and most of the teams had clearly discussed their tactics. All three of the Kraft Bamboo Luke Oil Seats made it safely through to Q2. Zol Jabo's Zengo Motorsport Seat here making contact with the Honda of Igor Schkuz at the first chicane. As the drivers took it in turns to lead their teammates around the lap, the three Kraft Bamboo cars were running 4th, 5th and 6th, with Jordi Genet improving to top the timesheets for a while. Not so fortunate was Jabo, who wouldn't make it through to Q2. Kevin Gleason too was struggling to set a top 12 time. Both the Engstler Liquimoli Seats made it into Q2, Lorenzo Velia 9th fastest and Mikhail Grachev 10th. Gleason, meanwhile, took to the gravel at the first Lesmo corner, and so his qualifying ended there and then. With half of the session remaining, the three target competition cars were all inside the top ten, watched by Stefano Daste on a weekend off from competing in the World Championship. Fastest in Q1, just as he'd been in both free practice sessions and in Friday testing, was Gianni Morbidelli on his home track and one that had been predicted to favour the Hondas. In Q2, Fernando Monge was making his debut in the TCR series, and he recovered from this spin to set the sixth fastest time in the Opel. Once again, the teams coordinated their slipstreaming, with target competition Stefano Comini, the current championship leader, setting the quickest time with around five minutes to go. Within just five seconds, however, Morbidelli had beaten that time, and so it looked as though his domination of the weekend would continue. The faces in the Kraft Bamboo garage said it all. Sure enough, none of the Seats could get anywhere near Morbidelli's time, and so the Italian driver grabbed pole position for the second time this season. The West Coast racing team and Morbidelli himself were delighted. The last time he'd qualified on pole in Shanghai, he'd won race one and nearly won race two. First of all, I must say that uh, once again, my team gave me a perfect car. Uh, I did uh, also a perfect lap, so you know, it was a perfect mix. So uh, in the end, I was able to make a, a 2003. That uh, is a good performance here in Monza. Confirmation of the results from qualifying. Morbidelli starts race one on pole with Stefano Camini alongside him, while the reverse top ten means Mikhail Grachev will be on pole for race two. Hello and welcome to Northern Italy and the temple of speed that is Monza, one of the most evocative names in motor racing and home to rounds 9 and 10 of the 2015 TCR International Series. This is Mark James in the commentary box and this is the track, the third oldest 
racing venue in the world. Opened in 1922, the 11 corners and some of the most iconic names in motor racing history that make up the Autodromo Nazionale di Monza. Morbidelli will be hoping for a good start, as will Comini alongside him, who grew up starting his racing career here at Monza. Started in the Trofeo Cadetti. There's the green flag. What will happen in this run down to the first chicane? The red lights go on. They go off, and we're looking for Morbidelli. And Morbidelli doesn't make a great start. I have to say, Pepe Oriola alongside. Comini leaves just enough space for Pepe Oriola to get alongside. Has Oriola managed to squeeze through? A little bit of contact. Some, some bumping and banging between the two Sayats, and Morbidelli's been squeezed out on the right hand side, the left hand side of the track, excuse me. Uh, as they thread through a little bit of bumping and banging. Uh, Fernando Monge in the Opel Astra involved, but Morbidelli drops from first to third in that, uh, that drag down to the first chicane. And Pepe Oriola makes the perfect start with its Andrea Bellicchi alongside him. Pepe Oriola leads from Andrea Bellicchi, from Gianni Morbidelli, from Stefano Camini. And that was Avanasiev, I think, taking to the gravel at Ascari. And it's Andrea Bellicchi, winner of the second race in Shanghai. As Morbidelli takes a look up, but almost unnoticed, it's uh, as Morbidelli was taking a look at the back of Bellicchi, it was Kamini who came through from fourth to third. Morbidelli has a look down this uh, long start finish straight, but uh, possibly not uh, close enough to have any effect, although Kamini has a look. And will he? Yes, he does. He attacks his teammates. So Kamini goes up the inside of Beliki. And it looks as though he's made it stick. Will Morbidelli go through as well? No, but a brilliant piece of driving from Stefano Kamini, who takes second place away from Andrea Beliki going down into the first chicane. Let's look at it from this elevated position. And you see there, the gap is just big enough for Oriola to go through. and. You don't leave gaps like this when uh, you've got a man like uh, Pepe Oriola starting from the second row of the grid. He says, thank you very much. And so this is the moment that uh, Gianni Morbidelli was uh, waiting for, biding his time, gets back up into the podium positions as Jordi Genet takes a look also uh, up the inside of Beliki. And has he made it stick? I don't think so. It's uh, still Pepe Oriola that leads. No, indeed, Jordi Genet does not get past Andrea Beliki, who hangs on to fourth place. So from the eight rounds, Morbidelli moves out to attack Comini, who then moves to block. And Comini is up alongside Pepe Oriola going round Parabolica, but he will be on the longer route as Gianni Morbidelli gets up alongside. Morbidelli takes second place. And uh, Comini just having moved off the line to attack Pepe Oriola, having left Gianni Morbidelli through, who now also takes a look at the leader. And the power of the Honda, the... Civic goes past Pepe Oriola, but has Morbidelli left it around. Also, Comini takes a look. Morbidelli, though, on the left-hand side of the track going into the first chicane, and no, indeed, Pepe Oriola holds the line. Morbidelli still second. But with the race around halfway through, Morbidelli takes an extremely wide line coming down the back straight towards Parabolica. Comini poised to pounce. It was Comini who talked me around this circuit yesterday, talking about breaking points, lines and gears and so forth. But Morbidelli, as we take a look at the, the view from Comini's car, Morbidelli up alongside Pepe Oriola. And has he done it this time? He comes down the start, finish straight. Yes, he has. The power of the Honda, the strength of that Honda engine, everybody talked about beforehand, saying it would be a, a huge advantage here at Monza powers Morbidelli past, but also Stefano Camini gets past Pepe Oriola. So Oriola goes from first to third in the space of a few hundred meters. It was uh, Camini who outbraked himself going into the first chicane. Takes no advantage from it as uh, Andrea Bellicchi gets up alongside his teammate. Bellicchi then moves up into third place going around Curva Grande. Let's just take another look at that. And really, You'll see the, the rumble strips there to discourage drivers from taking to the uh, the inside line going through the first chicane. And Kamini not really going to make it. He takes to the rumble strips and is penalised for it. Monge in the Astra, an awful lot of development work has gone on since the last uh, 
pair of races at Portimao, the team changing an awful lot of uh, components on the car, including the front suspension and the rear wing, Monge was telling me. And Monge holds the, the dual position of the team sporting director and now their driver here at uh, Monza as Kevin Gleason moves up alongside. Has the American driver snatched away sixth place? As we see Morbidelli go into the first chicane, yes, indeed he has. It's uh, Kevin Gleason who then outbreaks himself and goes straight on at the first chicane. There is Gleason outbreaking himself and really having no option but to take to the escape road. Has to weave around the arrows to take no advantage at all. And so he's back behind Fernando Monge. There, and Igor Schkuz into the pits. And uh, Schkuz out of the car. Lorenzo Valia there going straight on at the second chicane. Oh, that is, um, that's car 25. That's Stefano Camini who gets the, gets through into the gravel at the outside of the second Lesmo and uh, body damage. There's uh, blue smoke trailing from the car. Just trying a little too hard, taking to the gravel on the outside of the second Lesmo. And there he is, having dropped right down the field with uh, smoke trailing from the car. Let's take another look at that. He runs across the curb, way into the grass, into the gravel. Ah, there is the car of Stefano Camini. Now, whether there was contact there, I don't think there was, but we clearly saw the aftermath of it going uh, through into the gravel but his race is over, he's parked up, which will be a massive disappointment for the Swiss driver. And uh, indeed, as the cars go through Ascari, and uh, Nukia, that is, who's pulled up, with, uh, with blue smoke coming from the front of the car and damage to the front end. Uh, so what happened there? That's something we missed. We'll see that on a replay. There is Nuki on the, ah, this contact between that Grachev, Avanasiev, and it's Grachev who hits Nukia's car and causes the damage. Avanasiev and Grachev limp on, but Nukia is going no further. And as I say, blue smoke coming from the front of the car. Let's look at that from Nukia's car. There's the gap. He goes for it, and there is Avanasiev's car touched by Grachev. And Nukia, the innocent bystander in all of that. Grachev's car with front left damage, smoke trailing from the damaged tire. But Nukia is out of the car and is going no further. And uh, there is Avanasiev, sensibly keeping out of the way as he limps back to the pits. And uh, looking behind, Gleason again takes a look at, uh, at Monge. Gleason up alongside, but has to give way because of Avanasiev. I think there's a little gap behind him now to Kevin Gleason, so that's the breathing space as Gianni Morbidelli comes down for the final time to the Parabolica. Jordi Genet hasn't given up, though. He's right up alongside Andrea Belicki as they go round the right-hander for the final time. Third place looks to be staying with Belicki. But no, indeed, the pair almost side by side as Gianni Morbidelli flashes his lights to take the chequered flag, as does Pepe Oriola second. But no, indeed, Andrea Belicki holds on to third. Let's take a look at the results of round nine of the TCR International Series. Gianni Morbidelli taking the victory by just over a second from Pepe Oriola. Andrea Belicki third ahead of uh, Jordi Genet. Then Monge, congratulations to him and the Campos Racing team. And congratulations also to Tom Boardman. Gianni Morbidelli, a victory, another victory from pole position, but it was not an easy one for you today. Uh, it was quite hard. I used a lot of the brakes. I had to use the brakes and the temperature of the, my brakes was very, very high, so I suffered for that as well. And, you know, I did, uh, I did a, good, uh, a good race. I must be proud of what I did, and I have to thank once again uh, the West Coast Racing. Uh, we won together. Twelve cars, twelve of the fifteen that took start uh, the race uh, one start. As we wait for the red lights to go on, they do, they go off, a very short red light. And it looks as though it's the Kraft Bamboo Lukon car. Yes, it is. As Damico suffers, 
the cars virtually four abreast heading down towards the first chicane. Uh, Damico making contact with uh, one of the target cars and being spun around. And he goes backwards as Fernando Monge sneaks through. Lorenzo Velia taking to the gravel and rejoining, but avoiding further contact. And uh, Damico rejoins right at the back of the field, seemingly unscathed, as the three Hondas run together in midfield. We'll need to see a, a replay of the start. But it's Jordi Genet who I suspect is a slightly surprised leader with an equally as surprised Fernando Monge alongside him. Igor Schkuz leads the trio of Honda Civics from West Coast. With Camini now coming back at Oriola. As uh, Morbidelli gets up past uh, Igor Shkuz, so Morbidelli moves up another place, takes the place away from his teammate. One, two, three, four. Morbidelli now fourth. There's Camini already wave weaving his way through the field as we look down at uh, Jordi Genet leading Fernando Monge who moves out. And uh, wouldn't it be sensational if the Opel Astra was to lead the field? He takes a look but doesn't uh, get past Jordi Genet, but that Astra has been absolutely transformed this weekend. Fernando Monge threatening Jordi Genet for the lead. Baliki in third place, then it's Gianni Morbidelli. What can Morbidelli do on this uh, start finish straight as uh, Monge moves up onto the right side? And Monge, it looks as though he comes past. Indeed, it does. Fernando Monge passes Jordi Genet, who's carrying all that success ballast. Fernando Monge takes the lead in the Opel Astra. That is absolutely fantastic for the team. They will be delighted at that. Monge leads. Jordi Genet second. Third is Andrea Baliki. Fourth is Gianni Morbidelli. Let's take a look at this from the top shot. Watch. Damico, the contact is with ah, it's with the target car. It's of it's with Beliki that just touches Damico round into that uh, that slide. Once he's on the grass, he goes backwards down through the escape road. As we look from Gleason's car alongside Jabo, and uh, the locking up there is Damico's car, avoiding further contact and very lucky to get away with that. He gets into the. Uh, the chicane there is uh, Damico in the background as uh, Monge goes through. And there's contact also between Oriola and Camini. The two Hondas running together, and it's Schkuz just ahead of Gleason with Vaili at third of that pack. As we look down from the second chicane, and Morbidelli lunges up the inside, an attack on third place, and indeed he makes it stick. Gianni Morbidelli moves up into third place then, as they head down to the Parabolica. One of the, uh, the Hondas going very wide there, coming through Ascari. That was Gleason, I think, ahead of Schkuz. Morbidelli takes a look up the right side, uh, thinks better of it. Camini goes past Baliki. Stefano Camini then moves up a place and uh, runs one, promptly runs wide, allowing uh, Baliki to come back at him. But the two target cars now running together as they go down the start-finish straight. We take a look at uh, Gianni Morbidelli. Can he get past Jordi Genet as they drag down the start-finish straight? Down towards the first chicane. No, indeed, it's Monge who leads from Jordi Genet. In the background, the two target cars are wheel to wheel, and it's, it's uh, Camini who's got the line. Camini goes back past Andrea Baliki to take fourth place. So Camini now ahead of Baliki. Morbidelli just having set the best lap of the race so far. Monke holding off Janay, but has Morbidelli done it again at the same place? He gets past Janay on the inside. Yes, he has. Gianni Morbidelli, another great attacking move from the Italian driver. He moves into second place, and he now has Fernando Monke in his sights. They cross the start line, the offset start and finish line. The pair, uh, the two lines separated by something like 300 meters. As Morbidelli weaves, goes to the outside line. Jordi Genet battling with uh, Stefano Camini. And Camini sneaks past just, just forcing Genet. And also Genet, they're having to take to the outside of the curb, allowing Baliki to go past. So Genet drops from third to sixth, to fifth, excuse me. And now also being passed by Pepe Oriola, the heavier car, remember. Genet carrying 30 kilos of success ballast. So Monge still our leader ahead of Gianni Morbidelli. Then it's Camini, then Baliki, then Pepe Oriola. 
And again, Morbidelli moves to the outside line. Monge moves across as... Uh, and also, Stefano Camini sneaks up the inside. He takes second place. Morbidelli possibly fixated with the, the lead. As, and the lead indeed changes hands, but not in the way we thought. Three abreast going down out of the parabolica across the finish line. Gianni Morbidelli, you would say, has got the advantage. Stefano Camini in the middle. The three cross the start line together, but Gianni Morbidelli, you'd say, has the advantage for the right-hander at uh, the first chicane. And indeed, it's no contact between the pair, forcing Comini to go wide. Monche goes past Morbidelli. Contact also, I think, with, uh, with Pepe Oriola there. Red and white Sayats. Let's take a look at that again. Comini just has a tap from Morbidelli. He has no option but to go straight on at the chicane. And Morbidelli then allowing Monche to go through. There's the tap. There goes Camini, Pepe Oriola pulled up, possibly as a result as Gianni Morbidelli takes a look up the inside, the same place again. This time it's another three cars side by side as they go up the start finish line. The last lap it was, uh, in fact, four abreast as they go up the start finish straight. This is incredible stuff. Gianni Morbidelli, though, just getting behind Jordi Janay, possibly contact, they're squirreling slightly under braking. And indeed, no, Jordi Janay squeezes past, and it's Fernando Monge who comes off worst from that scrap, dropping from second place to sixth. Whoa. And uh, the Astra having dropped to fifth. Uh, so we get our breath back. Gianni Morbidelli takes a look up the inside, though, going down towards Ascari, and indeed takes the place. So Morbidelli back into second place, gets past to Jordi Janay. Brilliant touring car race, you have to say. And again, going down the start finish straight, not quite in the four abreast pattern we saw the last time through, but certainly alongside Baliki, has Fernando Monche got the line? There's Camini, there's Morbidelli. Janay safe in third, it would appear, but Monche has the inside line on Baliki. Oh, gets up onto two wheels, taps Baliki. Monche goes through. Let's take a look back. There's Monche getting up, tapping Beliki. Beliki spins. Monche comes through. Damage to the front bodywork of Monche's car. And what's happened to Andrea Beliki? The predicted Honda strong performance here at Monza has uh, come true with Morbidelli taking victory in the first race, but can he make it two wins? He's got one lap to do that. He's uh, alongside Camini once again, but Camini has the right-hand line for the first chicane. Morbidelli, though, a whisker in front, and indeed he does. He moves ahead, he moves into the, uh, the line, forcing Camini to go around. Contact between the pair, spinning Camini across the track, just avoided by uh, Jordi Janay. But uh, Gianni Morbidelli moves into the lead, Let's take a look at it again. T contact between the pair, half spinning Camini across the track, just being avoided by Jordi Janay. And that uh, first chicane certainly giving us its fair share of dramas this weekend. Let's look at it uh, from the back of Camini's car, spinning across and just squeezing through is Jordi Janay as Gianni Morbidelli comes through the parabolica for the final time to take the chequered flag ahead of Jordi Janay who flashes his lights in delight. Equally delighted will be Fernando Monge as we wait for the official. Wow, it's Camini who just takes fourth place away from Andrea Belicki. Igor Schkuz finishes sixth. Gianni Morbidelli winning round 10 of the TCR International Series just as he won round nine. Jordi Janay second, Fernando Monge you saw a moment ago celebrating in third and points for Comini, Beliki, Igor Schkuz. Gianni Morbidelli, fantastic day for you. Second victory, nobody before managed to collect two victories in the same weekend. I must say that it was an incredible result for me for West Coast Racing and, uh, you know, I, I'm really happy. Look for this smile and celebration from our double race winner this afternoon, Gianni Morbidelli makes it two wins from two races at Monza for the West Coast Racing Honda team. And the team received their trophy.
So Gianni Morbidelli then, 25 points from each of those two races. A massive points haul propels him back to the head of the driver's points table. Now 14 points ahead of Stefano Camini. Pepe Oriola now third ahead of Jordi Genet. That then was the TCR International Series at Monza. Rounds nine and 10 are done and dusted. We're back in uh, Europe for Salzburg in a week's time. Bye-bye for now.